Joining me now, an old friend of ours. Who, in fact, he's been on the show many, many times. And in fact, the last time at least maybe he was in South Africa years ago, he was with me right here in Cape Town, James Schillingloff. Now, you and I go back here to Cape Town, I believe it's in 1998. And that was the one of the first virtuoso conventions, international. Symposiums that they call them. Yeah, that's right. Whatever you want to call it. All right. <laughs> and, um, and I remember giving a speech to the assembled uh, travel advisors. And there must have been three or 400 in the room. And I said, you know, you need to think outside the box. You need to do things that are not in the brochure for your clients so that they have a chance to have bragging rights and, and have, you know, experiential one-upsmanship, if you will. And I said, you know what I'm going to do right after I give a speech here? I have a good friend of mine who has an airport operation at the airport in Cape Town, and he's got a British Strike Master fighter jet. And for 500 bucks, you strap yourself in with a pilot, of course, and the next thing you know, you're hitting the Cape and back in eight minutes. It's like the coolest experience ever. Who wants to come with me? And they all, and everybody said, oh, no, we have plans. Sorry. We're going to do high tea here at the hotel. Well, that's what I did, Peter. A high tea at the hotel sounded much better. It did <laughs> until what happened. What happened was I got on the jet. I flew down the Cape in eight minutes and back. And then I said to the pilot, how much fuel we got left? He said, about 47 minutes. I said, can I get on the radio and talk to the tower? I have an idea. Let's see if they're in a good mood. So I talked to the tower. And it, was a, it must have been a very bizarre day because they said yes. And we turned the afterburner on, got down to about 450 feet, and buzzed the Mount Nelson while everybody was having their high tea. We broke windows. We broke glasses. And the next day, 20 virtuoso agents were at the airport saying, can I please have a ride in that jet? Well, you also went to the bar that night and told everybody about it, and I was sitting with you at the time. <laughs> That's right. And, 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 of course, I've been back to Cape Town many times since, but every time I check into the, into the Mount Nelson, they go, you're not taking the plane, are you? Because <laughs> they don't want to pay the bill. But, but Peter, have you ever gone rappelling down Table Mountain? As a matter of fact, no. Have you? I have. I did it right after that event. And, and by uh, the way, you can see Table Mountain right from the one and only. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, it's an amazing mountain, and I went up there in my our street producer, clothes. Our producer, Kathy Jackway, is salivating at this. Yeah, and, and you go up there, and you have some uh, nice uh, African squirrel to tell you how to go down the mountain, and uh, you, they strap you in, and all of a sudden, you are bouncing down the cliff. And, and of course, uh, once you start bouncing down the cliff, you don't. there's no other alternative. You're going all the way down. No, you have to go all the way. And at some point, you have no cliff because then you're just on the rope. And I had forgotten that part of it. It was a little frightening at the time. Uh, I no, also no, no, it's not frightening at the time. It's frightening any time. Any time. <laughs> and it was, but it was a beautiful view as if I could have actually spent the time and not been crazed about the height. But No, you it, see, there's an opportunity for someone else to take a picture of you because you're too busy being terrified. Yes, but then I got, I was actually lucky enough to watch all my uh, friends who were coming down after me screaming as they came down, which was pretty amusing. Well, mm -hmm. obvious question. You all made it down. I Yes, we did, except uh, I barely made it home because one thing I forgot, suntan lotion. I was red as a beet. Yeah, so. that's, the, the, the South African sun here is unlike any other sun you'll ever see in the yeah. world. I mean, we're talking, you know, whatever highest rating you can get on, on the suntan lotion, yes. get it. Because that's absolutely true. And I just got back from a safari by river that I had the same issue where I was... I, I even had good suntan lotion, but it oh, wait, was, wait, wait, uh, stop right there. Okay, Safari by River. Yes, there's uh, one uh, up in Botswana. It's done by on oh, the Chobe in the Chobe River, Emma oh, Waterways okay. and Busy Queen, and it was a marvelous way to do it. They do a part of it is by land, but they do two or three days also on the river. And of course, where do animals go on the river? They go to drink, and so they're right along the river the entire time. I will tell time. you this: I, I had one of my most incredible experiences on the Chobe at a place called the Moana Lodge mm -hmm. because you'll never see a larger herd of elephants in your life. Absolutely. They all, and it's just, you just sit there going, did you just see that? Yeah, there are 120,000 elephants in Chobe National Park. So it's the largest ele elephant reserve, I believe, in Africa. And I'm telling you, it, it's worth it. And what we did, I combined it with a train trip. I did Robos Rail Robos from Rail. Victoria all the way up to, 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 Zamb to Zambezi, mm -hmm. to Victoria Falls. And then from Victoria Falls, it's only a 45-minute ride into Botswana. That's right. And then you're right on the river. It's unbelievable. It was one of the most fascinating experiences. When I came to, to South Africa last time, when you were here and you did your jet thing, I I didn't do anything. I didn't do safaris at all. Uh, you just stayed in the bar and drank. We well, know, that's yeah. true. We had we had to do that. Uh, you had to do that. Uh, right. Well, so did you. So, uh, <laughs> but this time I said I'm going to do something, and I was very happy with the selection. And it was a really a marvelous trip. Uh, saw elephants, saw lots of giraffes, saw hippos, saw a little bit of a lion, but not too much. The thing that's so cool about about where we are right now, it's a great hub for doing all of that. Mm. It's a great way to begin or end the trip. Sure. Cape Town, to me, is magical. 
it is there's a reason why it's sister city is San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Because think about it. It's got Robin Island, which there they have Alcatraz. Mm-hmm. It's got and Robin Island, of course, the island where Nelson Mandela was in prison. They've got cable cars and, and trams. And it's got the same kind of weather. And it's, and, and wine. You know, they it's have Napa. Little, actually a little warmer in San Francisco, but that's a- <laughs> some people would say it's a little warmer in, in Cape Town. It depends yeah, on the time true. of the year. Yeah, that's right. But the the wine district here, of course, uh, the other thing is uh, 45 minutes, you don't have to go all the way out to Stellenbosch to find great wine. No. 45 minutes from where I am right now, there's a place called Constanze Utzig. Mm-hmm. And the guy who owns that winery is a cricket fanatic. He built his own cricket pitch. And that's where I learned how to play cricket. You know, with, and with enough glasses of wine, even you can play cricket, you yeah, know. And you've seen the development going down here on the waterfront. Yeah. Cape Town has been absolutely amazing in the last uh, 15, 20 years. And then, of course, uh, not far from where we are right now, the one and only, in the basement of the Cape Grace is probably the best single malt uh, bar uh, I've ever been to. Well, so, we'll have to go there after you do your ne- next jet fighter experience. Yeah, right? certainly <laughs> after we do the jet fighter, <laughs> never before. What's the biggest surprise having returned to Africa for you that you're finding right now? I think it's how much it's developed. Uh, you know, when we were here, it still was, you know, there were some worries about crime here in Cape Town, and we were kind of told to stay off the streets. Uh, now nobody says that to us. And it's uh, just in general how developed the country is. Uh, and, and it's and very the, safe. And the food here. The food is amazing. Amazing. I mean, first of all, if you're looking for comfort-level food, they have everything right here, one and only. they got Nobu. Come mm-hmm. on. But, I mean, you've got uh, an amazing Indian food over at the Taj. Mm-hmm. Uh, order the Bali Chat. That's all I'm going to tell you. Order the Bali Chat. <laughs> uh, you've got great seafood, of course. Yeah. Uh, but it's no longer just, you know, meat and potatoes here. Because that was the old days of the old British holiday makers coming here. Sure. That's all they had was meat and potatoes. Well, I mean, where we're staying even now, the Mount Nelson is that classic British colonial hotel. And it's incredible. But now they have things like the one and only and the Cape Grace. And uh, you keep on going there. There's a lot of different options to where you can stay. Now, a river safari is a surprise for me because I didn't know you could actually do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you could go on the river, but a river safari on a riverboat, right? It's on a riverboat, but it's, uh, really your riverboat acts as your floating hotel. And right, then you course. get into tenders and actually go speeding along the Chobe River at a very good clip. Uh, and then you get closer and closer to the animals to the point where we were literally two feet away from an elephant chomping away at his grass. And as long as you're not between the elephant and its baby, you're okay. I think I was okay, and the elephant finally gave us a, a show and then w- w- went his merry way. That was enough, and then the same with the ele- uh, the The biggest surprise we had was a hippo right underneath our boat. The most dangerous animal in Africa. Absolutely. The most dangerous animal in Africa. Do not kid yourself. It's not the lion. Forget the no. lion king. It's the hippo. It's the hippo. It's the hippo. Oh, and we could and see, if you really want to see why. <laughs> how dangerous they are, go on a night safari, because that's when the hippos come out of the water and go hunting. Yeah, that's what, well, they come out because they're going to go grazing, and so yeah. that's when you can run into one, and you don't want to run into one, believe me. Or you don't want to have one run into you. I'm telling you, these guys, massive. Absolutely, and, and then and they're we, all muscle. We we had saw never numerous pods. That's what they call pods of hippos, and uh, they were just you know they seemed to be very you know well because during the day you just see their eyes poking up yeah. above the surface of the water, but at night, boom 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 boom. That's all I'm going to say. Well, I saw one during the day that I could tell that I didn't want to get really mess with them. That's for sure. Did he tell you that? Yeah, yeah. He just said, "Look, don't mess with me." And that was <laughs> <laughs> James Schillingloff. 